Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory, informative, training-related videos are done for the day, it's time for me to talk about current events in the online fitness community. Let me put on my plus five hat of weapons moving. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and uh, let's talk about Lobliner's new supplement that he's put out, which is a combination of two other supplements that are patented by two different companies that he's combined into one. And he's calling it Surgeon. And it's his newest way to make those shekels. Which I can appreciate. We all need to make our shekels. I know I need to make mine. In fact, I'm going to get all sorts of Pepsi commercials off of this video. Oh, wait a minute. Pepsi's not advertising with YouTube anymore. That's one of the reasons everyone's making half the money they used to make. Forgot about that. There won't be any Pepsi commercials in this one, guys, unless uh, Pepsi comes back online comes back on here and starts giving that millions of dollars back to YouTube. But, you know, I digress. Back to Sarah Jen. All right. It contains uh, something that is a derivative. I believe it's called Niagen. It's a derivative of D3, also known as Niacin, combined with something called Sarah Q, which is made out of, like, silkworm protein. You know, they just keep finding these magical products in the supplement industry, don't they? These magical products that the pharmaceutical world can't discover with their billions and billions of dollars. It's amazing how that works. Now, Lobliner claims that these products are scientifically proven to do all sorts of things. I believe it was everything from enhance your memory to uh, increase longevity, make you live longer, uh, better memory. Did I say that already? Maybe I need some of that. Improve your lipid profiles, your cholesterol, burn fat. It'll even help you get pussy. Did he say that? Actually, he might not have said that one. He might not have said that it's scientifically guaranteed to get you pussy, but it's fair to say that, you know, if you take any of his products, you're going to get lots of pussy while he gets all the shekels, right? That's how it works. That's how it works. But, uh, Back to the point of these products. It's amazing how these products have all these claims and then you go look at the research and there's very, very little independent research. Like, I went to look at the research on Saragen and interestingly enough, there's only been one human trial done. One human trial. The rest were on mice and rats. Well, this sounds like some other stuff, some other doctor we know associated with a supplement company uh, has done, doesn't it? I'm not going to name any names there. But a very, very good friend of Lobliner who I have some history with has uh, done a lot of stuff like that himself. Sold products off mice and rat studies. But the thing is, the researcher heading the study is financial ties to the company that sells the product. See, that's, that doesn't work. That's not allowed in science. That's called conflict of financial interest. See, that wouldn't be considered to be very good evidence at that point. Um, but, you know, they're, they're claiming it has certain properties. But here's the thing. Uh, it was noted that in humans it gets the same flushing that niacin has. And that's reasonable because it's a derivative of niacin. It's a metabolite of niacin. In fact, if you were to take enough niacin, and the pharmaceutical doses that a lot of these studies found results in are 50 times the amount that you would normally take, like 50 times the RDA. That's what you get prescribed when you get prescription pharmaceutical grade niacin. They get flushing too. You know that flushing is also associated with insulin resistance. See, the thing is, niacin doesn't help you lose fat at all. But they found high doses of niacin reduce fat burning in the body and they increase insulin resistance. Now they do raise HDL cholesterol for people who are suffering from certain types of cholesterol problems depending on your genetics and lifestyle. Uh, so there are health benefits to pharmaceutical niacin but it's usually for people who are sick but it does create other problems such as it can contribute to insulin resistance and that has been heavily noted in a lot of studies. All right, Heavily noted uh, along with reducing fat burning because it makes your body burn more glucose and less fatty acids for fuel. All right, this is not ideal for people wanting to lose body fat. And remember, in the long term, they found that it didn't increase longevity because some of the negatives equaled the positives for health to the point to where it didn't seem to increase overall uh, health markers in the long term. It just helped with certain things. If there was a problem for you, you would take it. 
but that's prescription grade amounts. Now, a lot of what they're claiming here is just simply unproven with these products. And here's the reality, guys. The supplement industry is notorious for this, and here's what, what I noted. I went to look at websites that were promoting these products, companies that were promoting these two products, and it was noted under the asterisk, or asterisk by all the studies, and the certain results that they had. And I read down at the bottom, and there was an asterisk at the bottom that said, these statements are not supported by the FDA. Well, why aren't they supported by the FDA? Because they're not actually proven. They're not actually proven. One or two at house studies aren't considered to be enough evidence to claim that a product cures or helps with any sort of medical condition. These are all medical issues. Memory loss, and we're talking about memory loss from major medical issues related to aging, Alzheimer's and other degenerative diseases. These things aren't proven to help with those. The FDA doesn't agree. And here's the thing, the supplement industry allows to claim that these products they found do something based off of one little in-house study. But you know what? Here's the problem with that. Big Pharma gets held to a pretty high standard with this stuff. People don't realize that, but there's a reason Big Pharma loves to charge a fortune for a lot of stuff they make. It's because the FDA makes them go through such rigorous long-term testing that they're going to capitalize on every penny they can because they are businesses. I mean, let's be realistic here. Big Pharma probably doesn't have your best interest in mind, and neither do the supplement companies. They're there to make a profit. So yeah, when they find something that works, they're going to capitalize on it. You know why? Because they don't find that much stuff that works. Here's the way it works. Anyone know about what the success rate is for a new drug that's found that shows promise in the first preliminary study? Less than 1% of them actually get through the FDA's requirements. Meaning they have to do long-term studies, all these different studies, multivariate analysis, everything to show that these products prove that these drugs actually help with these various medical issues or do these things. All right, the supplement industry, they don't get endorsement for any of this because one or two in-house studies isn't enough to show anything. There are over a hundred drugs that are discovered for every single medical issue that show promise in early studies, just like what the supplement industries use here. A hundred of them for every one that actually turns out to work. All right, having a one or two little studies, particularly in-house studies that show promise, is absolutely not proof. Not something that mean, means that you should be pimping a product to say that it works. That isn't considered proof. Uh, the FDA won't accept that. That's why claiming that this product, these over-the-counter products, are proven to do this is actually false advertising. Like Lobliner could technically get in trouble with the FDA for that because he's claiming these products are proven to do something that the FDA disagrees on. You got to conduct a hundred studies on this. All right, they're going to look through all these studies. It's going to have to be looked at, go through peer review. And the thing is, every single drug that gets turned away that doesn't make it through all the rigorous studies had a study somewhere starting out showing promise, showing that it might help with something, it might help with your cholesterol, it might help with your diabetes, it might help with your memory, it might help with Alzheimer's. A hundred of those, if I have a study that shows something that by the time they do multiple studies find out it doesn't work, a hundred of them are found for every one of them that works. So in what world are people conned into this bullshit from the supplement industry so easily so easily that they honestly believe that any of this stuff would be considered valid proof that these things work. You know, it's just like uh, with Insurgent. He came out talking about Insurgent, saying there was proof of work. I went and looked, the proof's not there. It's not even close to enough proof to be selling a product claiming it boosts testosterone. Not even close. And you know what? If I honestly believe these products work and they were cheap, I would take them. And that's the thing. People are like, you're just hating for no reason. No, I'm hating because this is scamming people. This is snake oil. It's exactly what this is. When you list a list of stuff like that that isn't proven because it's not, you don't have dozens of studies confirming these, these claims that you're claiming it improves memory, lipid profiles, fat burning, longevity. That sounds exactly like the snake oil salesman of the 1800s. They would sell this snake oil and claim that it cured a dozen different ailments. And you know what? It didn't. They didn't. It was called snake oil, and then snake oil salesman is a term that's been around since. And all these supplement companies are the new snake oil salesmen, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. When they're going to stand up and claim that a product does all this, and then you go look, 
and the FDA, there are warnings right there on the websites of the manufacturers having to say that the FDA doesn't uh, support these statements and that these products are not proven to cure any medical condition. How is someone going to stand there and say that they're proven to do these things? When they had to put a clause on the website of the manufacturer saying that the FDA doesn't support this and they are not proven to do these things. And if they were proven to do these things, they'd become a prescription substance real quick given out by doctors and wouldn't be available over the counter uh, from these supplement companies. That's the difference. That's another reason you know they haven't been tested enough to see if they actually work. Because uh, if they did, they would have a prescription on them. But that's the thing. You go look right there. You have, These companies are legally required to put up a warning saying these products aren't actually proven to work. And then you're going to have snake oil salesmen like Loblighter stand right there in a video and pimp products that the manufacturer has legally been required to state that they are not proven to do these things. He's going to stand there and state that they are proven to do these things. It's all about the shekels, isn't it? All about that money. All about that money. You know what? I like money as much as the next person. I like buying things. I like having nice stuff. But you don't have to rip people off to get it. All right? You can make a living. In fact, you can make a good living right here on YouTube just giving good information. You don't have to con people. You don't have to rip people off to make a living. You can make a real good living just by being helpful and useful in providing some sort of service, even on the internet, whether it's information, whether it's entertainment. But all these common in the industry, and that's the problem we have with this whole industry, it is full of these snake oil salesmen who are selling people nonsense and useless crap. And at a certain point, you know, more people have to just start calling this stuff out. More people have to start calling it out besides just me and a couple others. There aren't enough of us doing this. Um, but let's just, just be frank here. These products, he's got a list of claims. This is what they're proven to do. The websites of the manufacturers of those substances have a warning right there from the FDA saying that they are not proven to do these things. Uh, technically, he may be breaking the law by standing up and claiming they're proven to do these things. That might actually be illegal as someone selling them. I want to check with your lawyers, bro. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.